Welcome back to the studio and welcome, Joe. Oh, thank you. I see you in the profile running all over the place. You have a very interesting job. Yeah. What inspired you to start a business like Next Step? Uh, well, Next Step came about from uh, needs uh, of ourselves. We wanted to go and find other entrepreneurs in the city. Mm -hmm. We had been doing our own business here in Shanghai for about a year, year and a half. And at that time, we had met really very few other entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And we decided that our best way to go about finding other entrepreneurs was two things. We could either call them all up mm -hmm. um, or we could find a way to meet them in one location. So we decided to create uh, an event pretty much uh, off the cuff mm -hmm. and we started on a thread on the internet and within two weeks we created now Next Step and all the events that followed thereafter and we had a huge following immediately and, mm -hmm. and it's been strong ever since. You actually in the profile mentioned a lot about guanxi, mm. okay, networking. Yeah. Yeah. That is quite important here oh, of compared course. to the States. Uh, you know, it, it's a funny thing, you know, the day one you land here, you're taught uh -huh. guanxi is the, you know, guanxi is what you need to make things happen here. There, there's a lot of truth in that, mm -hmm. don't get me wrong, um, and there's a lot of people that are watching that, that if I go about this question the wrong way, they'll, they'll, they'll probably chuckle a little bit. But, um, you know, the most important thing is it's not about building guanxi that's not real. Mm -hmm. um, you have to start small. And, and whatever level that might mean for you as a business owner, uh, that could be just a friend or a group of friends that can help you, that type of relationship can build a base for you. And then from there, you jump up to the next level. Well, that's the same case as in the United States or anywhere else across the world. Um, you need to be building those relationships up in order to, to build your business mm -hmm. going forward. So yes. Yeah. Was it because of your own experience that you find the need to have this kind of network but you don't know where to find such a network. Exactly. Uh, we, we had run a, a golf business here in uh -huh. Shanghai. Uh, started off late 2005. And in that, we could have used a lot of helping hands, right. uh, whether it would be with uh, organizing landlords or with governmental issues, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. um, we needed it, but we didn't quite have it. We didn't have all the pieces to the puzzle in place. And what entrepreneurs really do need is a support group. It, it doesn't need to be you know, a helping hand at all times, mm -hmm. but if you know someone's there that you can give a call to at any point, it's, it's a great assurance to really help you build your business going forward. So what happened to the golf business? It shut down. Uh, <laughs> it, it, we were. What um, happened? It, what happened? It, the long and the short of it is, uh, uh -huh. we missed the marketplace. Okay. Uh, we were in a, a bad location, and secondly, we really didn't have um, a good understanding of who our clients were going to be. Mm -hmm. uh, in the United States, for instance, uh, miniature golf and driving range cages are really focused on anyone and everyone. Mm -hmm. um, and what we were trying to do here in China, we copy that model, but put a put a spin on it for sure. But by trying to market to everyone, we missed out on uh, a good portion of people. We lost a good deal of money, mm -hmm. uh, but from it, we've built stronger businesses since. So as an entrepreneur, you know you're going to fail at times. Uh, if you don't, uh, don't want to take that risk to fail, then you'll never go out and, and actually achieve or ever accomplish anything whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, Joe, I do a lot of events and exhibitions, mm -hmm. and then I see that you go to all these you know, fabulous, extravagant venues to do these exhibitions. You must, you know, pay a lot of money. No, we don't pay a lot of uh, money at all. It started from the very first mm -hmm. event. We pitched uh, the venue mm -hmm. and we said, we never did this before, but we know we can make it happen. Mm -hmm. And after several months of this happening, doing one venue after another, people began to believe in us. And really what it ends up being for the venue themselves, they get great marketing out of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, fantastic marketing out of it. We emailed to six, 7,000 people. They get 100 to 150 heads inside their door on a Tuesday night from 8 to 10 p.m. It just, that doesn't usually happen. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> it's, it's a mutually beneficial relationship that we hold with all the venues. Mm -hmm. And that's our policy. I mean, we, we, from day one, we've never paid for a mm -hmm. venue. And I'm, I'm proud to say that. And all the venues that we've worked with, um, you know, understand the value that we bring to them. Mm -hmm. And they have, you know, been rewarded successfully, you know, for it. Do you find being a foreigner here in, in China an advantage or an obstacle? <sighs> the first time I came to China was in 2000. I went to Beida. Mm -hmm. And at that time, being a foreigner was an advantage, mm -hmm. a, a, a strict advantage. Mm -hmm. I, I really believe in that. That's only eight years ago. I can mm -hmm. only imagine when it was 20 years before that. Now, I think it's, we're very much on an even playing field. I mean, just look at uh, the regulations that have been put in place over the past you know, year or so. Uh, from taxation. 
Um, all companies are pretty much on the same playing field. Mm -hmm. uh, from doing business, there are a lot of elements of the United States and education in the United States that are able to elevate you maybe among some of your peers from the, the local community. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's from a business building, from a management perspective, and just a, a human interaction. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, there are a lot of well-skilled Chinese out there that uh, will take me to town any day mm -hmm. uh, in doing business. So, you know, running your own business, in many ways, it's, it's can you say it's a, it's a doggy dog world? Um, and you have to go out there every day with the idea that you got to do something better today because every day there's more people coming into this game and every day the people that are already here are just growing stronger and they you know they want a little piece of your marketplace as well so you know being a foreigner it helps maybe a little bit but in all honesty it's a very equal playing field mm -hmm. is it becoming more and more difficult to to run a business here in China oh there's definitely more competition mm -hmm. every day for instance I, mean, I have no clue about the restaurant business mm -hmm. But I feel like there's restaurants and bars opening up every other you know, week mm -hmm. in Shanghai, whether it's a f focused on foreigners or Chinese or whoever it might be. And that's a, that's a space that is extremely difficult. Um, but if you're looking at other areas, especially where we're focused on in IT um, and online projects, you know, it's in many ways limitless. It really depends on can you reach out to your marketplace, capture them, and, and give them a message of what you're all about and get them to be your customers, your users, your service, whatever it might be. And that's how you'll grow your business. Every single market across the world is cluttered. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, if you were here in China 30 years ago, you'd be, there'd be many more doors that are easy to open. Mm -hmm. But uh, just because there's a lot of players in the space doesn't mean it's a, it's a bad space to be playing in. Actually, it's a better space. When there's a lot of people in one location doing you know, a number of different things, it's a sign that, okay, other people think this is a good business. That's why many people should be doing this business. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of, a, kind of something that I build our businesses off of. If someone else is not doing it, to go out and do it and move into an empty market isn't always, having a first mover advantage isn't always the best thing because there may be a lot of people that actually did a great due diligence on that space mm -hmm. and understood that maybe it's not the right place to be. You have to go do your own due diligence and find out if it's the right space for your business to be moving into. Have you ever thought about going home? Um, there are occasions mm -hmm. that come upon you where you're like, should I still be doing this? Mm -hmm. Is it the right decision? And I've always woke up the next morning and said, yeah, this is where I want to be. Um, home is something that I now call Shanghai mm -hmm. um, is the place for me. Uh, when I'm in the United States and I'm there for the holidays or whatever it might be, and I'm about to leave, I, I always say I'm going home. Uh, and that means going back to Shanghai. It's mm -hmm. a bit strange for people there. It's exactly. very bit strange. <laughs> and there's just so much opportunity here that uh, it, it really does keep me here in China without a doubt. Great. So, Jill, I'm sure I'll see you around the city. I'm sure you'll find me a a anywhere in the city at any time. Thank you so much Thank for joining us much. today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Jill. Cheers. We'll take a break, but we'll be right back with Shanghaipedia. Welcome back to Shanghaipedia. What is the most important thing to have in order to start a business in a new environment? The answer is networking. If you are anxious to meet other young entrepreneurs in Shanghai, go to Next Step Entrepreneurs Organization website for the latest information on networking. Who's watching? Tell me who's watching.